Question 1. You have said that the Waiting Room series was inspired by Camus' The Plague. Besides literature, where do you find inspiration for your work? In 2017, I created a series of artworks uh, called Overton Scripts, and they were about uh, women in Islamic countries. Um, and um, during that same year, I was traveling through Morocco, and I read that there's this mosque called Karabin Mosque from the 9th century with beautiful geometric patterns. And I am interested in sacred geometries and all the semiotics in these places, like these rhythmic sequences, geometric patterns, or iconic communicators like calligraphy. And I was really excited. However, when I went there, there was a man at the door and he said I had to wear this long jacket and a headscarf, which I knew. Um, however, he only allowed me to go to this small designated area for women, so I had to wait there for about 20 minutes. During that time, I was thinking some women have to wait, you know, all their lives, all their lives like this in designated places. And I decided to create this series of work. Um, and then I did more and more work. For example, uh, my most recent uh, series um, of paintings um, are called Dream of the Gold Chamber. And they are about all women. All women who aren't able to fulfill their dreams. And I use gold and earth pigments and ink. Um, Another inspiration for me is the Japanese traditional ways of art making and they use a lot of empty space. So in a series of paintings I call Praise of Uncertainty, I used empty space and my idea was to create uh, uncertainty which would allow the viewers to make or create their own dreams or find their own dreams. Um, because if I were to give them everything, all the details, there would be no room for that, right? Um, and then on these paintings, I wrote poems, love poems written by women from Andalusia, Spain, uh, during the 11th and 13th centuries. I wrote them in a way that they are not legible. I wrote them vertically like Asian scripts, because Arabic scripts are normally written horizontally. But I am interested in the powerful messages that such inscriptions are able to deliver even if they are not legible. So calligraphy, another inspiration. And poetry, obviously. And I write my own poems too. And for my poems, most of the time, I'm inspired uh, from the moon and the, the night and the silence of the night and love and many other things. For my films, I have been inspired so far from just random stories of people and, uh, and their dreams. Uh, for my theater that I mentioned, mm, or I didn't mention, um, I have been intentionally observing people in big cities, such as Mexico City and Istanbul and Paris, and um, I've been noticing that there's all these same, same, same personalities everywhere. Like there's an invisible person or who wants to be invisible. There's an absent person who is not in the present. There's always a surface developer who leaves at the surface, doesn't go deep. And I wanted to do something about this idea. So I'm writing this uh, play with a local playwright, an amazing woman, uh, Deborah Rosenberg. Um, it's a collaboration and a very exciting collaboration for me. And the metaphoric uh, cult, uh, theme of the theater is really that most of us are stuck in these personalities. However, um, if we want to uh, change, um, there's many opportunities to be somebody else, to exist in a different way. And I've been inspired uh, from for example, the clothing uh, that the women uh, used to wear uh, during the 17th and 19th centuries in, uh, during the Ottoman Empire, and I made uh, an, an installation in a, in a mansion in Chicago in 2017. And for another project, I was inspired uh, by the Syrian refugee children in Turkey um, 
and uh, in 2017 again, so I collaborated with a photojournalist from Israel, from um, from Iran. I, I'm sorry, from Ireland, um, and had an installation artwork um, in Chicago again. So I can say pretty much everything and anything on this earth could be an inspiration for me someday. Question two: How has your work changed over time? I started with sculpting. Actually, a long time ago, I started with painting and then sculpting. Then I learned printmaking and then I added installation art. And recently, I've been doing films and theater, um, playwriting, um, poetry. So, my work. But the medium that I use, the art forms change all the time, but I never abandon an art form. I would always go back. So it's always a, a circular way of changing. The thing that remains the same for me is I uh, start with an idea, right? And I call this a dreaming phase. Sometimes it takes years. But I let the ideas um, be in my mind, form and reform and uh, collapse with each other. Finally, when I feel like they are mature enough to do something about them, uh, then I um, start evaluating different mediums and art forms. And mostly the idea chooses the art form. Um, so for me, uh, it's kind of endless with the excitement of learning and being able to apply different forms of art and letting the idea itself choose the form of art, I think, for me, is very, uh, is very important. Question three. Your show at the Customs House Museum is part of our Women's History Month celebration. Do you feel female artists are receiving more attention from collectors and institutes now than even 10 years ago? I really think that the female artists are getting more attention compared to 10 years ago. And um, the reason is I have been hearing um, that uh, museums and venues are providing more opportunities to female artists um, and there's more room in publications. There's still a gender pay gap, obviously, uh, but it takes time for uh, rigid mentalities to change, obviously. Um, what I really think, though, uh, we must continue working uh, hard and. Uh, to, to, to say what we want to say with our arts, um, independent of gender. So. Question four. Having collaborated on projects with dancers and poets, and even your daughter in the past, who would be your dream partner to work with? Dream partner. I have done uh, so many collaborations. Uh, uh, with dancers and musicians and poets and photojournalists and playwrights and even scientists. And um, I enjoyed every one of them. But I would say a dream partner would be someone who uh, takes ownership of the project and uh, works uh, with passion, develops ideas with me. Question five. What are you working on currently? What I'm working on currently. So uh, I have been developing a workshop with my sister, uh, who is a clinical psychologist, on uh, well-being, uh, a combination of psychotherapy and arts. And we would like to teach that in uh, Turkey, United States, and some other Islamic countries online, some of them, uh, especially in countries where uh, the women are banned from education. And this has been really exciting for me. And uh, I've been working on this theater play called Foggy Night that I mentioned. Um, we will have a performance in my studio in April during the Boulder Arts Week, uh, at least an informal performance. And then uh, I recently started thinking about this experimental film about five women in five Islamic countries. And I really would like to uh, 
eliminate the sense of distance uh, between these women and the rest of the world in a way to present uh, or by presenting their daily lives um, and also their aspirations and longings and desires. Uh, so uh, this is a new idea. And I recently started dreaming about the painting series again uh, using gold and uh, large size uh, um, boards um, and I was inspired by this line in one of Pablo Neruda's uh, poems uh, and he was referring to uh, the obscure things between the shadow and the soul so um, it will be about this but I have no idea how it's going to how they're going to look like so. We'll see.